Talking about the direct intervention of Soviet armed forces into Hungarian uh, domestic politics, the most dramatic event was the arrest of Béla Kovács. Béla Kovács was a very outspoken uh, head of the smallholder party, the dominant party in the parliament, uh, who uh, considered democracy very seriously, and that was a cap capital crime, as a matter of fact. Now, the Soviet pressed the government to uh, suspend his immunity by the parliament and then be tried by Hungarian court, but the parliament at the time, in 1947, was still not willing to do it. Uh, since the Hungarian authorities showed such a kind of independence, the Soviet interfered, and this man was arrested by Soviet uniformed secret policemen at the steps of the parliament when he left the parliament. Now, I don't have to turn to smaller uh, uh, events. If the head of the largest democratic party could be arrested by Soviet authorities, it demonstrates the degree of Soviet interference in Hungary's democracy. Uh, after 1948, then, the Soviet embassy was such a huge institution, which was not a, a, an embassy in the diplomatic sense. It was an operation center, which then uh, channeled the uh, Soviet order for different Hungarian institutions, including the secret police. How were the armies of Central Europe Sovietized? Now, uh, the whole story of the armies is very strange and interesting. After 1948, the armies were led to rot in all over the area because the Soviet army present, the Soviet garrisons, were considered more than enough for, uh, so to say, national defense in quotation mark. All the armies of East Central Europe then from 1948 fall began to be developed into the largest modern peacetime armies of any of these nations. It was completely connected with the Tito Soviet rift. And from that time on, uh, the development of these armed forces and the control of them by the Soviet was uh, parallel to how the secret police was already uh, uh, controlled by the Soviet before. In the Minister of Defense, there was a lieutenant general with a huge staff, I mean a Soviet lieutenant general with a huge staff. In every department of the ministry, there was a Soviet advisor with an interpreter and with a small staff. And the Soviet a system went down to the Army Corps, division, up to the regimental level. Every command post had its own Soviet so-called advisors, but that really was a separate Soviet command system in Hungary, which could have led the army in peace or war, even without the input of the Hungarian uh, command structure. It was a total control. How did the party exercise control over the army? Uh, it was parallel to the Soviet control. Uh, first of all, in the center, the armed forces were the only ministry field of activities which did not have a secretariat in the party bureaucracy. In the party bureaucracy, for every ministry, there is a secretary. A secretary for agriculture, for heavy industry. There was, from 1948, it was Sovietized. The whole secretariat for the armed forces were transferred into the ministry. In the ministry, under the Soviet system, they established so-called main political directorate. The main political directorate within the army was simultaneously a party secretariat. Here, the division between the party and the state gradually faded away. And this main political directorate in the army, the head of which was the first deputy of the minister, had also its agencies down even farther than the Soviet advisor because it went down to the company level. 
Uh, and with the Soviet system, they introduced the polytruc system. Until the Sovietization, the political officer of every command was an assistant of the commander. Now he became the co-commander. And uh, beside every commander, there was a communist politruk. And no command was valid without the politruk counter signature. So strong was the uh, uh, political, uh, the party control of the army. Plus now, these politruks had a separate uh, a tool in the hand. Every regiment and battalion had a Communist Party cell. This Communist Party cell acted under the command and control of the politruk. In other words, the Soviet control was complete from top to bottom. The Communist Party control was complete from top to bottom. And then the secret police now, which was another Soviet institution, had its own posts also down to the regimental level. There were three Soviet party and secret police control over the whole. And that was totally uniform in all the East Central European armies. As commander, in effect, of the Hungarian army, can you tell us about the plans to invade Yugoslavia? Yes. Uh, now, Every East Central European armies would have participated in the invasion. There were, however, uh, countries which did not have common border with Yugoslavia. That was Poland and Czechoslovakia. We did not know exactly where they were supposed to be thrown against Yugoslavia, but we were informed that they will participate too. You must not forget at that time Albania was also still a loyal Soviet ally. So that at the push of the bottom, all of the satellite armies would have crossed the Yugoslav border and would have occupied certain territories. In the case of Hungary, the Hungarian army would have crossed the Danube, built a so-called bridgehead uh, uh, on the southern shores of the Danube, and that was the end of the mission of the Hungarian army. From this bridgehead, huge Soviet troops which were supposed to be mobilized and deployed in central Hungary. They would have run through the bridgehead. The honor of occupying Belgrade, the capital city of the heretic, was reserved for the Soviet army. Where did this plan to invade Yugoslavia come from? Absolutely ready-made from the Soviet Union. They brought in Soviet maps, in Soviet letters, of course, what the Hungarian army was at the time was also Soviet design. The new army now, a, the hugest peacetime army Hungary ever had, was also created, organized, equipped, commanded, indoctrinated, trained by Soviet uh, patterns. Soviet uh, textbooks were the basis. So the Soviet knew more, much better than I, so to say, where and how many. Now, according to Soviet plan, this army was supposed to be concentrated between the Danube and the Tisza River, and where, which division goes, where it came from Moscow. The Hungarian general staff really had a task to translate, translate it into correct Hungarian. Why did this plan for stop? Why did Stalin stop? Well, it? see here you only can rely on, on assumption. But a learned assumption of mine is, and I have certain factors which could support this idea is, and I very strongly believe in it, before because of Korea. When in nineteen fifty summer the uh, North Korea invaded South Korea. The idea was the Mao Zedong and the West is a paper tiger and would not resist. Now, when America and then the Allies resisted and went into counterattack, Stalin came to senses. Stalin, in that respect, uh, probably the only respect, he was rational. He did not want to clash with the West. He went as far as he could uh, go without clashing with British, French, American troops. He believed that America West is not a paper target.
Why did Stalin really hate it as Yugoslavia? I believe that uh, question should be given to a psychiatrist, you know, because uh, Tito was the most doctrinaire follower of Stalin. The only thing what rationally one can uh, 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 surmise is that the Stalin megalomani of one man leadership with he, his leadership won the war, etc., etc. He just could not tolerate the slightest diversion from his line. And still, since Tito did it, Stalin hated it seriously, religiously. What is the real function of the people's armies in Central Europe? Now, I would rather speak about the Hungarian because this absolute uniform pattern is gone since 56 and 68. Uh, still, there are similarities. The main function in, function in Hungary is more labor than national defense. They are used in harvest, they are used in road building, etc. I don't go to Hungary, but friends come back and uh, talk about this phenomenon. No one considered the Hungarian army anymore as a war machine. What is the core of party control, party rule? What keeps them there? Uh, there is a tremendous psychological effect of the Soviet presence in Hungary. Uh, they don't demonstrate, they don't show themselves purposefully, but you see them. And everybody knows the huge uh, trans-Danubian Soviet garrisons. Like in Hungary, like in Poland, like in Czechoslovakia, they know that they can go so far. And if they go a step behind, then the Soviet army is there and would interfere. No other institution has anything similar in the effect on the Hungarians' mind that the Soviet army, which, so to say, condemns them to behave. How popular and widespread was support for the 56 uprising? How popular was what? And, and how popular was support and widespread was support for the 1956 uprising? <sighs> How popular was the Hungarian uprising among the, the, people. the people? Well, first of all, it was not an uprising, it was a revolution, you know, a revolution uh, in the proper sense, uh, if theoretical or otherwise. Since 1848, when Hungary also fought against two huge reactionary forces, the Habsburgs and the Romanovs, since 1848 there was never such a national unity as it was in 1956. The idea of the uh, revolution, multipartisan parliamentary system, pluralistic society, freedom in a broader sense, had such an appeal that again, since 1848 revolution, there was no such uh, unanimous view and such national unity than it was in 1956. How brutal was the Soviet um, reaction to the uprising. Here again, we don't know, see, as far as the brutality of the Soviet aggression is concerned. Numerically, I, it would be very difficult to, uh, but uh, the best estimates is that uh, killed in battle with the Soviet Union goes to up to 1,500. Those who were executed is between 1,000 and 2,000, which is more than all the terror regimes in Hungary since the 1848 revolution was suppressed. The Habsburgs did not execute so many like Kadar did. And in addition to the death, which of course is the most sorry thing, the 200,000 people who left the country is such a bloodletting that the whole thing together is something the Hungarian nation has to pull themselves together to, to survive, you know, it is horrible. You describe the Hungarian Revolution as successful. I know. even told that the Hungarian Revolution was victorious. Why do I say that? Uh, because a revolution is a domestic affair in which the old regime is abolished and the new one is successfully established. Now, both things happened in Hungary. The old regime was abolished, the Communist Party itself dissolved itself, recognizing the absolute defeat of the old totalitarian system. A multi-party system was uh, set in its place, and in November 1956 there was no force on the right, on the left, on the center, on anywhere who would have dared to challenge the authority of the new regime. As a domestic affair, and the revolution is a domestic affair, the Hungarian revolution was a complete victory. 
that the Soviet forces arrested the government and suppressed the revolution is, do, I mean the government, it does not change the historical fact that the revolution as a domestic affair was victorious. Was the Hungarian army inhibited in its resistance to the Soviet invasion by the political leadership by Imran Nagy? Well, see, Imran Nagy um, did his best to avoid bloodshed. It was partially uh, of uh, men of reason. We can't win vis-a-vis -vis the Soviet in a pitched battle. Number two, he was a patriot. He was very much afraid of bloodletting of the Hungarian people. Consequently, he, even after it was crystal clear that it was no more just Soviet movements, but a new Soviet aggression was uh, carried out in Hungary, he completely forbid me to make an announcement that we are in war and thereby relieve uh, the soldiers and the freedom fighters from earlier restrictions. He only made the same statement when a world collapsed in his, uh, when the parliament was already surrounded by Soviet troops. Then he went to uh, the radio and stated that the Soviet Union attacked Hungary. In other words, we were in war but that he wanted to prevent with any possible means. What hopes died for the people of Eastern Europe in 1956? The last vestiges of the hope that communism, particularly the Soviet type of system, can solve any human problem, that is what died in, in Hungary in 1956. What was, why was Carter's repression so brutal? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, for that you have to sit in a Soviet chair, you know, because uh, I definitely believe that it was not Kadar's will. Kadar was a puppet at the time. Uh, his crime is that he gave his name to this uh, reign of terror. It was a Soviet reign of terror. It was a Soviet mentality, a Soviet mentality which fits into the great purges. It fits into the collectivization uh, and annihilation of 20 million people, etc., and the deportation of Tartars and uh, Stalin killing his most close uh, collaborators. That was the continuation of the Soviet mentality and Soviet method. It has nothing to do with Hungary. But why did the Soviets want it to be so brutal? I believe that they wanted to be absolutely sure that the Kada regime will not be challenged. In other words, with a terror to make the atmosphere in Hungary for Kada absolutely secure so that no one will think of challenging the regime. How stable is Kardar's compromise with the Hungarian people? Uh, well, uh, you know, originally, a great majority of the Hungarian people accepted a higher life standard with uh, silently accepting the continuation of a milder total regime. But still now, uh, since at present, the life standard is rapidly decreasing this very unstable compromise is going slowly down. And larger and larger is that group which never accepted it. The democratic opposition, the patriotic opposition, in other words, the opposition's numerically is growing now.